Hello everybody, it's Yashar here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Canadian Tire Corporation stock. A few weeks ago, I released a poll on the stocks you want me to review, and Canadian Tire was one of the top choices for by you. I already uploaded Canadian Pacific stock analysis video, and this would be the second stock analysis video based on your votes. After this, I will work on PayPal stock analysis. In this video, I will discuss the Canadian Tire business, their future plans for 2023 and beyond, the dividend history of this company, the risk associated with this, comp with this stock, and finally, I will provide you a detailed stock analysis using my personal discounted future earnings model and will then provide you with a fair value of this stock depending on your investment goals. The company HQ is located at Toronto and their shares are traded on TSX for almost 156 Canadian dollar at the time of recording this video. They pay a dividend with a starting yield of 4.5% and the market capitalization of this company is around 9.6 billion Canadian dollar. Canadian Tire stock price chart clearly show that this company earnings and cash flow is depends on the overall economy and it is a little bit cyclical. In all of the major market crashes and financial downturns in 2000.com bubble, in 2008 financial crisis, and in 2020 COVID crash, Canadian Tire shares fell significantly. And in good times and bull markets, it performed really well. Anyway, if we ignore the short-term fluctuations, the stock returns have been fantastic in the long term. Even if you bought this company at the peak of dot-com bubble, your returns would be 260% without considering the dividends and with dividend reinvested, it is more than 300% and you would definitely outperform the index S&P 500 in the long term. As a good investment in the past, it is important to know more about the business of Canadian Tire and see the valuation of their stock at the moment to realize if they can continue to outperform in the future, which is what you will see in this stock analysis video. Before starting the video, I want to emphasize that I'm not a financial advisor. This video is not a financial advice for you to buy, hold, or sell this stock. This is just my personal opinion. You should always do your own research before making any financial decision. With that being said, let's start this video. Canadian Tire as a corporation is a little bit different than Canadian Tire stores that all of us Canadians are familiar with. They are a diversified multi-channel company, which means they own various brands, products, and services, and not only a single type of retail store. In general terms, the company operates in three segments, retail, REIT or real estate, and financial services. It's hard to say what type of business Canadian Tire really is. Some parts of the brands and services are crucial services and products, which are which is similar to consumer stable businesses and some of them are discretionary products and services and that's why i personally consider canadian tire a company with both consumer staple and consumer discretionary characteristics canadian tire store itself is almost a canadian version of home depot and is my favorite place to buy home improvement equipment like paint and plumbing equipment and cost effective gardening supplies car repair tools camping, sporting, and do-it-yourself tools. It's important to note that Canadian Tire stores are like retail stores that run on a dealership network. It's a bit like franchising, where the individual stores can only obtain items via the corporation, but they have their own management and operations. It's a complex model. In addition, the company offers auto services, which I would say may not be the best quality services in the world, but still they have their own customers. And also the company own other retail stores like Marks, Atmosphere, Party City, and Sportcheck. Sportcheck in particular is another store that my wife shops at, the, at, at this store frequently, and usually their stores are pretty busy at least where I live. Canadian Tire also owns Canadian Tire gas stations, which is another crucial services that they offer. They also own a few brands like Heli Hansen in clothing and MasterChef, which has gas grills and some kitchen appliances. And also they have their own financial segment via Triangle MasterCard and Triangle Reward programs. Finally, Canadian Tire REIT segment operates as a close-end real estate investment trust that holds a portfolio of 368 properties, including Canadian Tire stores and their warehouses and industrial properties. So, as you can see here, 
Canadian Tire owns and operates a wide range of stores, products, and services, and that's why it is a very diversified company with a complex cash flow structure and accounting measures. As I mentioned in the intro, Canadian Tire earnings and cash flow depends heavily on the overall economic condition, and it is a bit cyclical. For example, while they grew their EPS sales and cash flow nicely in 2021 in the retail businesses and financial sector, in 2022 things are not as good as the last year. While their total revenue and store sales are up in 2023 by 11.8% and 7.3% respectively, which is pretty good actually, their diluted EPS is down almost 15% year to date and 20% in the last quarter due to lower income from their retail businesses as well as higher expenses. They have spent a lot of money due to increased freight and shipping costs. They, they also had major expenses like hiring new people, developing their e-commerce business, expanding their triangle rewards program, and opening new stores and opening new distribution centers, which basically these expenses hurt the margin of the business, at least in the short term. For example, their selling, administrative, and general expenses went up 8% year over year in the last quarter, and their margin reduced by almost 200 basis points year over year to 32.8%. Canadian Tire focused a lot on two growth factors in the recent years, attracting new members to their loyalty program and growing their e-commerce business. They believe attracting more members to their loyalty program and triangle ecosystem even if it costs them in the short term, means more data and insights for their AI algorithm, and therefore they can send members targeted personalized offers, which can in turn bring more value to the corporation in the long term. They also invested a lot of money to develop their e-commerce business and they improve their online shopping experience, which seems to working very well for them at the moment. The management team at Canadian Tire predicts that they can double their EPS by 2025 by growing their same store sales by more than 4% year over year and growing their margins and return on invested capital from less than 10%, which is actually around 8% at the moment, to 15% by that time. This is a huge improvement if they can achieve it. Canadian Tire has a long history of paying out and increasing its dividend year over year. They tripled their dividend in the last seven years and at the same time bought back their shares aggressively every single year. Last year alone, they returned almost 9% to shareholders via just dividend and share buybacks, which is impressive. I really like what I'm seeing here in terms of buyback and dividend increases. The company also has a very low payout ratio of only 31%, which means the dividends of the company is secure and safe and they have room to increase this dividend in the future again. One of the most important risks with Canadian Tire is supply chain risk. Surprisingly, Canadian Tire sources most of its merchandise and products from Asia. Therefore, this company significantly relies on international shipping companies and in particular Canadian railroads to make sure they have enough products in warehouses and stores. And we all know that Canadian railroads keep increasing fees and this means a continuous increase in Canadian Tire costs in the future. Another risk is that Canadian Tire doesn't have a distinguishable moat from its direct competitors like Home Depot. I can find pretty much all the items that I need from Canadian Tire in Home Depot stores. And most items I need from, for example, Sport Check and Marks can also be found in TJX or Nike Under Armour stores. I still continue to buy from Canadian Tire and Sport Check because of the convenience, but there is not a wide moat in their businesses. Another risk is that they are very diversified and this fact can also be concerning as it requires a very efficient management team to operate such a diversified portfolio of products, businesses, and services with high efficiency. Finally, Canadian Tire has a relatively large amount of debt on their balance sheet, which I'm not a fan of. This is my favorite part of the video, where I can show you my stock analysis based on the financial data I discussed in the previous parts of the video. I use a discounted future earnings model, which basically estimates the value of stocks based on projections of their future earnings. So I make some assumptions about the growth of the company in the next 10 years, and then discount the future earnings per share into the present value of the stock based on my expected rate of return. 
So I start with the past fourth quarter diluted earning per share of the company. And based on three different scenarios, I predict the future earnings of the company in the next 10 years. In the bear case or the most negative case for the stock, the company can grow their earnings by only 6% in the short and medium term. And then the growth will drop to 4% in the long term. Again, I try to be really conservative with Canadian Tire as they are a little bit cyclical. I consider terminal multiple of price to earnings of 8 for this case, which is consistent with historical bear periods for this company. For normal case, I considered a little bit better growth and a terminal multiple of 12, which is historical average multiple for this company. For the bull case or the best possible outcome, I consider the business grew by 12% in the short term and then the growth rate drops to 8% in the long term and I consider the terminal multiple of 16, which is a bull multiple for this company. 12% growth is not out of the realm of possibility for Canadian Tire and the management team can actually believe they can grow even faster than this. I assign a 50% chance to the normal case, a 25% chance to the bull case and 25% chance to the bear case. For growth stocks, I usually expect 15% return. For dividend stable stocks like Canadian Tire, I expect 10% return. If I expect a 10% return from this company, the fair value of this stock is almost $164 per share, which means compared to the current share price of almost $154, the shares are traded at 6% discount, which means it's basically a buy according to the model. It means if you expect to receive 10% return year over year on your money in the next 10 years, you can probably receive similar amount of return on average return if you buy the stocks right now at this price. In summary, Canadian Tire is a diversified Canadian company with both staple and discretionary products and services. The company cash flow and EPS figures are a little bit cyclical and depends on the economic condition, but overall the company is moving into the right direction and the management team has a clear path for growth, profitability and returning value to shareholders via buybacks and dividend. The stock is currently trades close to its fair value for a 10% return year over year and it pays a starting yield of close to 4.5%. I personally really like Canadian Tire and I have a small position in this company at the moment and I'm looking to buy more shares of the company in 2023. There you are guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you enjoyed the video consider subscribing to the channel to see similar videos. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Farewell.